Hello and welcome to Africa, South Africa to be exact. This is my first YouTube video and in it I will explain how I repaired this Griffin Evolve wireless sound system. It's just the speaker. The unit actually belongs to a friend of mine and since I repaired his car amplifier he gave me this to fix. What it is, is a wireless speaker that connects into a dock and basically you can plug up your iPad or your TV to the dock and these speakers can be placed around your home. They have a little wireless radio which I'll show you in a second inside and an amplifier, battery pack. So, as you can see, it's got the battery pack which I opened. Don't worry, it seems to be okay. Uh, a speaker and a bunch of connectors. At the back is this three point connector for power and data okay so basically what happens to the speaker when you plug it in is you plug it into the base station and the base station shuts down there's another speaker and that one is just fine You plug it in it plays music and you can carry the speaker around after it's synchronized with the base station so I took the speaker home, I didn't take the base station or the other speaker with me because I didn't think I'd be able to do anything about this. So, but I seem to have managed to fix it as far as I can tell. I haven't tested it yet, but there's no reason it shouldn't work because I believe I found what was wrong with it. So, first I managed to open it and I have seen on the internet a few other people have actually asked and looked around to try find a way of opening this without destroying it and it is possible although the box was apparently built to be sealed for life which is kind of silly because it's got a lithium battery pack which one day we need replacing but well that's modern electronics for you they're not built to be serviced at all it's a throwaway thing which is a bit counterintuitive in this world where everything's supposed to be green and nature loving but anyway the sad thing also is that this thing's very well built, apart from the fact it's throwaway. It's the Adish, it's, it's incredibly heavy for the size. The speaker appears to be a, a good quality speaker as far as I can tell, but I don't know much about speakers. Uh, it's very heavy and shielded. The box is made out of rather thick plastic. There's a layer of sponge, another layer of plastic and a grommet around the back part. I'm guessing that all helps with acoustics, but I'm not I'm no expert on acoustics. So what I did was okay, let's get to the board. To get this thing off, I used a bunch of kitchen knives and a spatula. So basically I started from the bottom, which as you can see this is the bottom, there we go. Stuck knives just there and there and same thing that side, same thing that side, and then I got a spatula and I propped it in right along that seam and just twisted and it came right off but that took about an hour of fiddling and lots of bloody fingers so basically after I got this thing open I looked around there wasn't anything obviously dead or blown or had its magic smoke liberated so I took out a good old multimeter and uh, I started probing around. I found with the con continuity setting that basically the two ports that connect positive 12 volts and ground were essentially shorted. There was maybe a 1.2 ohm resistance on it, but it was a short. So I looked around for what component after the plug it might be, and I found it was actually this diode. Which I believe, if this thing would focus, it focuses. Okay, which I believe is a reverse current protection diode. Although, it's not a normal reverse current protection diode as I've seen before. It appears to basically short out the power supply when it's plugged in incorrectly. It doesn't prevent current flowing through the circuit, it just shuts, it shorts out the power supply and presumably circuitry inside the base unit or simply the power supply automatically shuts down the power supply until you remove it. This I guess was done because there is a possibility you could plug this thing in backwards. As you can see the only keying method is this rubber thing and this fits into a recess into the box but 
there is a possibility, I guess, that you could peel the rubber thing off or it could simply accidentally contact because the contacts on the base station do stick out somewhat and are spring-loaded. And I guess if you plugged it in backwards, it could cook it. So, what I did was I unsoldered the diode, which it was a surface-mounted diode, and, and here it is, okay, there it is, and tested it with a multimeter, let's get that into the picture, and basically put on resistance, it's on 200 ohms resistance, flip that over, and have a look. Crap! Found it! Many apologies. Okay, really not made to do this, but anyway... As you can see, there's about a 1.9 ohm resistance in this direction, and... I believe it's the same the other side. 1.9, 1.8 ohm in the other direction. So the diode's obviously dead. Now, I was unable to figure out what kind of diode it was. I looked at the serial number, it's hardly readable. It seems to have heated up somewhat, and the white paint on it seems to have turned a brownish color. But I could tell it's made by on semiconductor, which kind of made me think it could have been a surge suppression diode, but I doubt it, because there'd be no point putting a surge suppression diode so deep into a circuit unless it was for the latching. Basically when you plug it in there might be a short instantaneous surge when it connects, but uh, I doubt it. Anyway, it seems to be a diode. So what I did was I carefully removed the diode after all the testing was done and I got a 1 in 4 007 diode because well that's what I had on hand and that diode is pretty much good for everything. So I folded the legs very carefully and soldered it down onto the surface mount pads. Okay. Um, then I used my homemade bench top power supply, which is very embarrassing. So I won't show it to you. It's basically a voltage regulator and a couple of wires and an old power supply from a printer. But anyway, I don't have a fancy power supply like some other people on YouTube. <laughs> this is Africa after all. That's something I mean to get anyway, so hopefully one of these days I will be getting one. And, okay, so, the sad thing is, the, the board is incredibly well made as well. As you can see, there's test points absolutely everywhere, there's test points. Yeah, yeah, there's some more there, there, I believe there's some more there, and there's some on the daughter board that serves as the radio receiver. So... Basically, it's a very well-made board for something that is meant to be thrown away once it reaches its service life, which I would guess is maybe four or five years, depending on how much you use the battery. So, I was actually pretty surprised that somebody went to all the trouble of putting a mask on and putting labeling all the voltage points. But anyway... After I tested it, it seems to work just fine. The LEDs on the front panel light up, and the voltages at all the labeled test points appear to be exactly what they should be. So, my guess is that it'll work just fine. It'll work a whole lot better than if it had a 1.8 ohm short on the power supply, that's for sure. So basically, in a couple days, I should be able to get it back to my friend and see if it works. But I see no reason why I wouldn't. Now, I just want to... Sh Take a look at the board if you're interested. There's the power supply section and a little tantalum capacitor, the only one on the board. What we have on this side appears to be the charging circuitry. This goes to the, the battery pack, a ground, positive and a negative thermal coefficient sensor to prevent it overheating. Okay, and I'm guessing this is more this is a low noise op amp, which I am guessing takes the signal received by the wireless receiver, 
processes it, amplifies it rather, and sends it onto a D-class amplifier, which then goes through the output section into the speakers. This is a microcontroller, which I'm guessing controls pretty much everything, because the unit seems to be basically non-functional unless you plug it up to the base unit. So, this controls the charging, I guess it, it also controls a bunch of LEDs on the front panel of the speaker, which are hidden behind the grill, I won't show that, and basically that's about it. There's hardly anything else. There's connectors for the power switch as well, which is just a simple push button switch. There's no latching on the actual switch itself, so that's also controlled by the IC. And that is pretty much it. The interesting thing is, as I said, is that for something so well made, basically, the box is superbly made for something that's basically meant to be throwaway. So is the PC board, which seems to be a real shame. Especially nowadays when companies try to market themselves as being green or environmentally friendly or something. I mean, what would it really have cost to put in a replaceable battery pack? And a simple way of opening and closing the thing? Okay, it might... It gets difficult because there's the legal things that if somebody opens it and, I don't know, kills themselves. Although that seems rather difficult unless they possibly choked on something inside or burnt down their house with a lithium battery pack. It seems unlikely. It should have... My guess is it's simply value engineering. It's cheaper to put clips than it is to put screws. And making it throw away means you'll get a new customer every few years. Although if it was me, I certainly wouldn't buy another one. That said, this isn't mine. This is somebody else's and I would say I would actually buy one. I'm not doing a review on this. The thing's old and long since out of production. But I would actually buy one. If the quality is the same, it's apparently designed in t Tennessee, which is in the United States, duh, and assembled in Taiwan, which is in China exactly, sort of. <laughs> anyway, it's incredibly well made, and if I haven't seen any other Griffin things, but from what I've read, they're all very good units in general. It just seems a shame that they should build units that are essentially waiting to go to the dustbin. It's, I guess, it's all part of that same generation of products after the iPad, for example, and the iPhone, and those products. I'm actually recording this video on an iPad, which isn't exactly meant to be serviced, although you can. You can replace the battery if you want to. I haven't tried this yet, and I hope I won't have to for a couple of years at least, but if the time ever comes, I will definitely try to replace a battery. I won't throw it away. I'm not an environmental nut job, but it still seems like quite a shame and a waste of money. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. This was my first video, so please forgive me. My iPad is mounted on top of a tripod that's mounted onto basically a homemade stand for it that I built out of the top of a scanner with a couple of holes drilled into it. Seems to work alright, but please give me some feedback if you've got anything positive to say. If you're one of the local YouTube trolls, feel free to do your troll thing. Can't stop you there. Uh, and uh, please subscribe. I do plan on making more videos if I get a couple of views. I've got lots of other interesting electronic related things and a few other South Africa related electronic things. So, please subscribe, comment, like. Thank you very much.